little while ago, I spoke of an internet search tool known as Archie, short for File Archive. And remember, I said that one of the initial uses of the internet was for transferring files from one computer to another. Now, even if you haven't used email, you know what it does. And go for, well, you're an expert on that now. But FTP, that may be something new. It stands for File Transfer Protocol, and it's the standard used for downloading files from one computer to another. FTP is an important and widely used tool on the internet because it's still the preferred way to download graphic and sound files, large text files like, say, the complete works of Shakespeare, and software for internet applications. By its nature, FTP is different to use than any of the other internet functions you are familiar with. First off, you can't view the result of your internet transfer until you successfully downloaded the file and then integrated it into your computer. Also, FTP still retains some artifacts from its early internet roots. You must log on to the host computer and then enter a password. Now, some servers don't want you to visit, unless of course you know the code or password. That's how people protect their files from unwanted visitors. The vast majority of files available on the internet, though, are there for public use. So the common logon ID is anonymous. And the password is your email address. If you have your own address, use it. If not, check with your teacher or librarian before you use your school's internet address. Also, a word of caution. Before you venture off into an FTP session, it's important that you review and understand the file layout of your computer. Once on the internet, your software will ask you to choose a location to place the files you want to retrieve, and you must be sure to put them where they won't interfere with your computer's operation. Now, just like Gopher, there's an incredible amount of information available on FTP sites. There are thousands of public FTP servers that contain vast electronic libraries of programs, graphics, you name it. So how do you find them? Well, Archie, of course. Archie is to FTP what Veronica is to Gopher. There are now 27 Archie servers scattered all over the world. There are searchable databases of the nearly 2 million files available by FTP. And, just like Veronica, once a month they're updated with the newest resources available from all of the FTP servers on the internet. Now, one of the great uses for Archie is locating graphic files, perhaps for a presentation or as part of a report. So, let's try an Archie search, say for an image of Bill Clinton. Again, you'll need some software known as a client, and I'll be using a client called Anarchy on my Macintosh. Now, to compose an Archie search, you have to think a little like a computer programmer. As opposed to Gopher, which organizes files into menus, FTP servers look more like your computer's hard drive, a bunch of file names. So an Archie search will return matches to keywords in the actual file names on FTP servers all over the world. Complicated or multiple word queries are likely to turn up either nothing or a jumbled mess. Here, I'll show you. Come up here to File and select Archie, and an Archie box will appear. First, we need to choose a server to log on to. So click on the down arrow over here, and here's the list of the 27 Archie servers located around the world. Now, the first four on the list are the servers here in the United States, so we'll try one of them first. Then, in the Find window, I'll enter my keywords, Bill Clinton. Archie searches can take a little time. One way to expedite the process is to engage more than one Archie server at a time. While this first search is running, I can come back up here to File, select Archie, and choose a different server from the list. You'll see that my keywords are already there, and start a searching. Now, in theory, all of the servers should return the same results. But depending on the traffic to the servers, one may take less time to return the results than another. And here's a return from one of the servers. Oh boy, not too good. Take a look at this. A ton of folders named Bill. Something about the Bill of Rights, Billiard Parlor, Bill the Cat. Nothing on Bill Clinton. 
That's because Archie doesn't understand multiple keywords. You have to keep your search to a single keyword. Also, when we launched our search, we left our search parameters in the default substring setting. See up here? This rather cryptic group of settings means that in this mode, our keyword is searched for in all of its possible uses, as well as substrings of larger words. That's how we wound up with Bill the Cat in billiards. And remember, Archie didn't even look for the second word. So the first thing we can do to get us back on track is to change our keyword to just Clinton. And we'll leave the case sensitivity turned off or unchecked. And that should yield the most responses. Remember that we're looking for a graphic image of Bill Clinton. On the internet, you'll find that there are many different kinds of graphic formats, but one of the most popular is GIF, or graphic image format. If you spend any time on the web, or even in gopher space, you're bound to run across them, and they always carry the file extension .gif. Now, take a look at this second search setting, called Pattern. It allows for a search with a particular file extension. See, this time, we'll use this setting and add the .gif extension to my keyword Clinton. Let's see what we get. And here we are. Now, just double click on the file William Jefferson Clinton .gif, and the file will come directly to our desktop. Once it's there, we can just double click on it to view it. Pretty cool, huh? While Archie's searches are very different than Veronica, again, a little patience and some practice is really all you need.